Hello hackers and welcome to a quick tutorial that is going to teach you how to create a graphical user interface using a stacked widget and show you how to change between the pages on that stacked widget really, really quickly. So I'm going to be using PyQt5 for this. So I'm going to type into my command line designer to get my application to open. I am using Python 3.7 on here. So that's the command there. If you are using a later version of Python, like Python 3.8, you may need to look up what the command is, but it should be PyQt5 designer. And then when you press enter, designer will load from your computer. So once we get it open, you can see that we get our new form sitting here ready to go and we are going to be creating just our main window. So I'm going to come straight down and click the create button here. Now our main window loads on screen and it has a couple of different features. So we've got a menu bar here, so I'm going to actually get rid of that and we've got a status bar down here at the bottom as well, which I am going to remove. So to get rid of those, I've just right clicked to get that menu to appear, hit remove and then they're gone. The other thing I want to do just really, really quickly is just set some sizing. Now we could change the size and have it scale based on a layout manager and grid layout. But what I'm going to do this time around is just so that it makes it nice and easy is we're going to set the minimum size to 800 wide and 600 high and set the maximum to be the same. So that just means our window can't be resized and it'll be this big all the time. So the purpose of today was to look at a stacked widget, which is one of these guys here. So I'm going to drag this onto screen and you can see that it puts a little thing up and we get a couple of arrows here. Now what a stacked widget actually allows us to do is to have multiple bits of content on screen, but only showing one thing at a time. So specifically what we're going to build in this little app is just something that changes the background color really, really quickly on our different pages of our stacked widget. So to do that, I'm just going to create three buttons down here at the bottom. So I'm going to grab three buttons. These are going to be our three primary colors. So we're going to have three there. Okay, I'm going to have one button, which I'm going to type blue, and then another button red, and another button yellow. Okay, so three primary colors, and then we've got our stacked widget sitting here. Now it's important to note that I have put the buttons below where the stacked widget finishes. Now if I was to put them on the stacked widget itself, that means that it is a part of this page of the stacked widget. And we don't want that, I want them down the bottom so that they can be clicked on at any time. Now I'm not going to worry too much about formatting and things like that, this could be a little bit messy and that's okay. Now to start with on our central widget we have our three buttons. I'm going to focus on the stacked widget in a minute, but we need to be able to call these in our Python code in a second. So to start with, we need to change their object name. So I've got the blue button selected here and you can see over here, it says push button. That's not gonna be easy to find. So I'm gonna rename this one to blue button or blue BTN. I'm gonna select the red one. Hopefully you've guessed that it's gonna be red BTN and then the yellow one, if not obvious already, should be yellow underscore BTN. Okay, so we have our three buttons sitting there ready to go. All right, and they are sitting there so that we can utilize these later on in our Python code. We then have our stacked widget, okay? Now how the stacked widget works, if we just look up at our object inspector, you can see that we are building our main window and inside our central widget, we now have these objects here. Now the yellow button moved to the bottom because it's done in alphabetical order. So we've got our stacked widget. I'm not gonna change the name of this because I want it to be easy for me to remember that this is just my normal stacked widget because I only have the one of them on here. But what we do need to change here are the page names because this makes it much easier for us to reference what we want to be able to see. So once you select the page name, I want you to come down here and change its object name to home. We're going to change page two to say blue, but as you can see, we've now run out of pages for our other two. So the way in which we go about getting two new pages, right click where it says stacked widget, come down to insert page and say after current page. Okay, we're going to do that twice because we need two more. All right, then we can very quickly click on this one that's under blue. We can change that one so its name is red and then we can change the object name of the last one to be yellow. Okay, so very quick recap, three buttons down the bottom, blue button, red button, and yellow button. We then have our pages of our stacked widget. Okay, so when we click on this, we have our home, and then as we go through, it would change those for us as well. Okay, so these arrows don't appear in our normal app. Okay, so we'd be able to quickly change those. So what I wanna do is I wanna come onto my home page of my widget and I'm just gonna grab a label from down here in my display widget section. 
and I'm just gonna give the user a very quick instruction. Please click the button below to update the background color. Oops, I need to spell it like an Australian. We're gonna do some CSS in a minute and that it means that we're gonna to need to write it the American way. Okay, I'm gonna do some very, very quick font changes here just so that you can see how they're done as well. So when we come into font, I can come in and increase the size a little bit. So if I maybe make that say 12 point font, and then if I scroll down even further, I could even select down here that I want it to be word wrapped. And I want the alignment to be in the center. Okay, so that gets us a nice easy instruction. Now you can see in our object inspector that our label now sits inside our homepage, which is perfect. That's where we want it because we're not going to be changing the text on the label itself. We at this stage don't necessarily need to give it a name. Normally it would be uh, ideal for us to give the object a name every time it's easy to call. So from here, we just need to make some quick CSS changes to our user interface so that it can do what we want it to do when we're ready to code. So we're going to jump into our blue uh, stacked widget page here and we're just going to come down to the bottom here and or the bottom of this yellow section and you can see that there's one that says style sheet so we're just going to hack some really quick css into that one so just background hyphen color no u okay it needs to be written the american way uh, for those of us that live somewhere else in the world that have a u in color and then we're going to call that one blue okay so that changes that one to blue then I'm gonna grab the red one and I'm gonna do the same thing again. So background hyphen color and then red and then select my yellow page, background hyphen color colon yellow. All right, so that gives us a couple of different pages. We now have our home page where we can see our instruction. We've got our blue page with the blue color, red page with the red color and yellow page with the yellow color. Just be very, very careful to make sure you haven't clicked on stack widget and then typed your style sheet stuff in because that will mean that the whole thing changes that particular color rather than having it able to be cycled through like that. So that's it for us here on our QT design. So I'm gonna really quickly save this one. So I'm just gonna go file, save as, and then I need to go and find a nice easy place for that to appear. So I'm gonna come just straight down to my D drive. I'm just maybe gonna call this one new folder. So uh, color switch tutorial, jump into that folder there. And then I'm gonna call this one main window. Okay, now the name you use here is quite important because you are gonna to need to refer to that when we get into PyCharm a little bit later. So I'm gonna hit save, and then I am gonna open up PyCharm now. Okay, and then we're gonna be good to go. All right, so here we are in PyCharm. Um, just gonna create a brand new project. I need to go and find the folder that I saved my file on my D drive. So I'm gonna scroll down, find D drive, open that one up come down and find my color switcher tutorial, click okay, and then that's gonna be ready to go. I also wanna make sure if yours looks like this, that's all right, but if we open that up, just make sure you are selected on existing interpreter and you have a version of Python sitting there in your box ready to go. If you do it in a virtual environment, it won't run necessarily perfectly for you straight away. So we're gonna hit create. It says it's not empty. Do you wanna keep going? I'm just gonna say yes for each of those. So now I have this ready to go. I have my file in a UI format. So this is all XML code, but we need to turn that into Python. So the first thing we need to do is come down to our terminal down here at the bottom. Okay, and then we're gonna type in this command here. So pi uic5, we're gonna type the name of the file. So we're gonna say main window. Make sure you follow the like case sensitivity of what you gave your name before. And then we're gonna have hyphen o for output and then what we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna call this one UI underscore, oh, I can't type, main window dot PY. Okay, this is gonna give us our output file. I've got an error there. Um, oh, I missed a letter. PYUIC5, okay, main window dot UI output UI underscore main window, which is good because I had a typo up here too, dot PY. Okay, so if nothing happens, that's good. That means it didn't error out like the one above that you can see there. But what we're gonna do so that we can see that is if we close or toggle down this folder and reopen it, you can now see our file is ready to go. Now we could have sat there and typed all of this uh, user interface code in, okay, using our Qt uh, widgets and stuff like that and the libraries from there, but we don't need to do that. 
because we have just converted that file super fast. So the next thing that we need to be able to do is actually create our file ready to go. So I'm gonna right click on Color Switcher Tutorial, my folder, come down to new and select Python file. And then from there, I'm just gonna call this one main window. Okay, not to be confused with UI underscore main window, which is all of my user interface information. So when I press enter, this is where I get a blank file ready to go. And I'm gonna put in my boilerplate code. So I'm gonna talk you through each of those things there. And then we're gonna call some information out of our widget or out of our user interface. Okay, so in terms of our boilerplate code, we're just gonna import a couple of libraries to start with. Now, some of this stuff, if you haven't done it before, is going to be identical for a lot of the projects that you make. So I'm gonna start by importing the system and then from pi qt5, dot qt widgets i'm going to import q application and then i want from pi qt5 qt widgets again import q main window okay so you can see i've got my little type hints popping up there so if you see those appear and it's the option that you want you can just press enter and it'll auto type the rest of it for you and then i also need to import my user interface here so i'm going to say from ui underscore main window import and then I need UI underscore main window. All right, so that's gonna now come into this file here, find our main UI main window class, and then it's gonna import that ready to go as well. Now we need to create our class. So we're gonna have class main window. Okay, we're gonna create its constructor. So it's init function, so init self, and then we're gonna have self dot main underscore win equals Q main window. Okay, so that's gonna now come up and make this nice and easy for us in terms of variable to access the Q main window library. Okay, and then we're gonna have self.ui equals UI underscore main window. Okay, so same thing, we're creating like a quick easy variable called UI that's gonna go and grab any of the information we need out of our UI class from the other file. And then we're gonna set up our file. So we're gonna have self.ui set up UI Okay, and that's gonna be self.main underscore win. Okay, so now we're saying that our UI setup is gonna come from this particular class here. Okay, so super easy for us to find. Then we need to tell it how to show. So define show, okay, which is then a self. And then we are gonna have self.main underscore win dot show. Okay, as our class there. And then finally, we need to set up a little bit of code that quickly sets it up so that if we were to run this application from somewhere like the command line or whatever, if this is the main program or it thinks it's the main program, it knows what to run from there. So we're gonna have if name equals main. Okay, then we're gonna say the app is gonna be a Q application. And then we also wanna bring in any arguments, so any extra information that comes across uh, if we were to run it from the system or something like that. So main underscore win equals main window. And then main underscore win dot show. So we're gonna run that function. So we're setting up the application and then telling it to show on screen. We also need to tell our app what to do if the cross is pressed so that it's exited. So we're gonna say sys.exit app exit underscore and then run that function as well. So you can see that that one now has finally gone away from being gray and that is also now being used. So that's what we would call our boilerplate code for a PyQt application. So you could almost copy and paste that into pretty much every window, so long as you've named things like UI uh, underscore main window and stuff like that. Now we need to go ahead and actually set up our code for our specific application. So we're gonna add some stuff in here. So the first thing I wanna do is come in and tell it which of the widget pages to show as the first page. So that's why it's coming up into the init function. So we're gonna say self.ui, okay? And then I'm gonna to refer to my stacked widget. This is why I didn't rename it because now I don't have to think about it. So stacked widget, set current widget, okay? And then I can say self ui.home okay so what we're saying here is go and find in the ui class or in the ui variable which is in that ui function class sorry ui ui class that's coming from this other file go and find the home one and it's going to set that to be the home file okay well the first page that we see 
So that makes things nice and easy for us from this point forward because now we can then start to set up our buttons first. Now with buttons, we need to make sure that we set first of all the signal and then the slot. So the signal is the thing that the system is listening for and then the slot is what it actually does. So we're gonna say self.ui and then we're gonna say blue button. Okay, and the signal we're listening for is that if it is clicked, okay, and then from there, we're gonna say that we want you to connect to this function. So we're gonna say self dot show blue. Now this is not a function that we are running right now. We're saying where it needs to be in memory. Now show blue doesn't exist because we haven't made it yet. We're gonna make it in just a second. We need the same thing for self dot UI red underscore BTN, clicked, connect, self dot show red. Okay, and then we've got just that one more button. So self dot UI dot yellow button dot clicked, Oops, dot connect, and then we need self dot show yellow. Okay, now the code for each of these is pretty quick. Okay, so we're gonna come down a little bit further and we are going to uh, start to add these functions in. So I'm gonna have that I'm gonna define show blue. Okay, and then my show blue function is pretty simple. Okay we are gonna have self.ui and it's actually basically the same as up here. So dot stacked widget, dot set current widget, and then we need self, self.ui. And then because we're looking for blue this time around, we need it to be blue. Okay, now I'm not gonna mess about and type each of these in individually, but if I come into here and I grab this code and I come down a line and paste that in, I now have two blues, three blues, which is obviously not ideal, but I'm gonna change that one to say red, and then I need it to call the different red function, and then I need this one to say yellow, and then I'm gonna call the yellow page. Okay, so that's basically our program ready to go. We now have our main window set up and it knows to go to the home page first. And then whenever these buttons are called, it's gonna go and find these functions. So show blue, show red, show yellow. And then from there, it's gonna find them down here and change the current widget. So let's have a look at what this looks like when we run the application itself. So we're just gonna right click on main window and come down and say run main window and then our app will open. You can see here, please click the button below to update the background color. We click the blue button, it changes blue, red button, it changes red, yellow button, it changes yellow, okay? Now we don't have a way to get back to our home screen with the instructions, all right, that's okay. That's not what the purpose of this little application was for. It was just a very quickly demo how to create a stacked widget in PyQt5 and then how to code that same stacked widget and get the different pages to appear on screen. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of inspiration to go out and build a, another application in Qt5 that has a stacked widget and then you're able to show those pages so that you get your different content appearing at different times. So thanks so much for joining me and I hope to see you over in another one of the video tutorials.